We've been speaking a lot recently about the Pascal run of GPUs from NVIDIA and of course I've spoken in the past about the notebook variations of these very same Pascal GPUs. Now so far the 1080, 1070, 1060 and 1050 Ti have been reported to be incorporated in future notebooks basically giving you know, gamers affordable notebooks but still get some really good performance out of the things inside and I say affordable, I say affordable in comparison to a full on gaming laptop of course. Now, I've discussed this before, but basically the caveat here is going to be the memory bandwidth inside the Pascal GPUs that will be in the notebooks. However, this isn't to say that these mobile versions of the GPUs are going to be bad. You know, if the leaked benchmarks of the mobile version 1060 is to be believed, there's very little performance that is sacrificed. And obviously, they've undoubtedly made some few other tweaks there to kind of make up for that loss in memory bandwidth to make sure that you're still getting some pretty stellar performance out of these mobile Pascal GPUs. Now, in the 1060 itself, the visible differences are so far only to be known to be the GPU clock and the, the boost clock, basically. The mobile version has a GPU clock of 1405 MHz with a boost clock of 1671 MHz, whereas the standard 1060 will have 1506 MHz and standard and boost clock of 1709 MHz. Now, according to a report from Golem, these lowered clock speeds, as well as a different board, will allow the mobile variant of the 1060 to consume a piddling 65 watts, while the desktop version has a TDP of 120. Now, obviously, for the 1070 and the 1080, it is a bit of a different story. These cards have a higher TDP value, so obviously, NVIDIA will be forced to make a few more noticeable changes. These smaller changes are only present in the 1060 that we know of. Now, the 1080 is expected to feature lowered clock speeds, and the same source is saying that the TDP of the mobile version will be 125 watts instead of 1080 watts for the desktop version. And the same goes for the 1070 as well, it too will feature a lower TDP to its desktop counterpart with a value of 85, 65 watts lower than the standard 1070 will end up consuming. As of when we will see the official announcements of these Pascal mobile GPUs and the pricings for the notebooks and what sort of performance we can actually be looking at as of course these are all based upon leaks, they could be inaccurate although usually these types of leaks are usually pretty on point but it's always important to remember that these could be based on older variants or something along those lines. We should be looking at an announcement during August and then OEMs will start presenting their offerings, presumably at high retail prices. And there's also mutterings that AMD is also preferring the mobile versions of its GPUs and looking at the RX 480, which is already pretty damn affordable. And when you, of course, you perhaps scale it back a little bit for a notebook, you're going to be looking at a pretty nice high end notebook, but at a slightly more affordable price as the 480 is, of course, one of the cheaper cards that we've seen on the market, but with some really beastly power under the hood. And obviously, how good these cards are for you know laptop and notebook gamers depends entirely on the pricing and availability. So really, we should wait for the official announcements. But I think as long as the price is right for these cards inside the notebooks, of course, these could be a really nice option for people looking to game on the go, or even just for someone for a high-powered laptop that doesn't really want to shell out huge amounts of cash for that. Perhaps you want to edit on the go, or you know some other sort of video processing, or something else that you need to do on the go that requires still a little bit of horsepower under the hood. That could actually be really useful, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens here. As myself, obviously, I'm, I'm an editor, and having a high-powered rig that I can take with me when I'm traveling, as I do travel an awful lot, might actually be really helpful. So I'm looking forward to seeing what both Nvidia and AMD have on offer here. So I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes peeled next month, which is of course August, to see what exactly they have on offer, how much it's going to cost, what exactly is the power and what is the availability going to be like. So, that is me done for this video, but do give us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and thank you very much for watching, and as always, let me know your thoughts and opinions. I'll see you next time.